Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,254. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,254, and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great question from Alan Douglas at YouTube. He says, I have two columns running side by side with random numbers. So I put the RAN function, which generates a number between 0 and 1 based on a uniform distribution. If I hit the F9 key to evaluate, you could see these numbers are changing randomly. And he wants a formula that will find which two values, one in each column, are the closest in value. Now, sometimes there'll be a bigger number as number one, and sometimes number two will be bigger. So really, we want to find the absolute value difference between each one of these. So I'm going to use the ABS function for absolute value. And I'm going to take number one minus number two, and it actually doesn't matter which order you do this. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click, and send it down. And of course, you could prove yourself that it doesn't matter which direction we do here. It's always going to be exactly the same. Hey, I'm going to delete that. Now we have a column with the absolute value difference. And now we simply can use the min function to find the min. And I'm going to highlight all these values. Tab. So there's the min value. Now our real goal is to look up the item number. So now that's our lookup value. We need to find the match in this column. So if I was doing this visually, I would find a match here. And the relative position would be looks like 9. And then we need to jump over to this column. These values will be our lookup values. So the ninth value is item 951, et cetera. So I need to return that to this cell right here. Well, that's the perfect job for the index and match function. Now, index is a lookup function. And the array are the items you want to look up. So I'm going to highlight all of these. There's the array, comma. And now I need the row number. Remember, when just a second ago, we counted 9. Well, I need this to be dynamic. So in row number, I need to use the second lookup function, match. And match is a lookup function. I'm going to say, hey, look up this min absolute value difference, comma, within this whole range here. Now notice these are exactly the same size. So when we find a relative position here, index will know to go over and get the item from this same size range. Now that lookup array right there, I'm going to type a comma. And we are doing exact match because these values are not sorted. So I'm going to type a 0. Now again, match is a lookup function that will look up this value and tell you the relative position. So right now, match will report 9 to index. Now I close parentheses, Control Enter, and there we go. So the min difference, if we were to do it manually, it looks like right there. And sure enough, it got the right item number and returned it to the cell. Now that's helper column and two cells. Could we do it all in a single cell? You bet. The trick is this. Anytime you have a helper formula like this, copy down a transactional data set with rows like this. If we can simulate this whole column in our single cell, we can then make a single cell formula. And this is going to be an array formula because we're going to be making operations on arrays of values. Now, think about this. The way we can think about how to create a formula like this is start in the final formula. I am definitely need index with all of those. But notice match is looking at F6. So that whole formula right there is somehow going to have to be in the lookup value of match. And then notice that is a range, but that whole column has to be simulated inside our formula. So I'm actually going to start with simulating this formula in this cell, and then we'll build out from there. Hey, guess what? ABS, but instead of doing a single cell minus another single cell, I'm going to give it the entire column. Now notice this is not a single value. So when I type minus, this is different than what we normally do. Normally, we take a single cell and subtract some other single cell. But that's a whole range or array of values. So this now is an array operation. And I'm going to subtract the entire second column, close parentheses. That whole array operation there 
is inside the number argument. Now, ABS is expecting a single number, but I gave it a bunch. So when I highlight this or simply hit the F9 key to evaluate, you can see, sure enough, I have simulated that entire column in a single cell. And you can check out the values, 0 0.29, 0 0.37. Now I'm going to Control Z. I'm actually going to copy that Control C because I'm going to use that little bit twice. Now let's go and build match function. Remember, match needs to look the min value up from that whole column. So in the lookup value, I'm going to simulate the formula that was in this cell, min tab. And in number, I'm going to Control V. Remember, that's that whole column, close parentheses, and a comma. Now let's go back here. I have simulated not only this whole column, but also that formula, min of that absolute value differences. Now I go to the next argument, and I have to put the simulated helper column, the ABS array operation, into the lookup array. Come to the end, comma, 0, close parentheses. Now if I hit F9, I can see, sure enough, the 11th position. So all the way down to there. So it's delivering the correct relative position. Control Z. Now I simply can come index the array right there. These are the values I'm looking up. There's the array, comma. That entire row number is that wild array formula. Now I can come to the end, close parentheses. And now, because we made an array operation, we actually have to go to see where in the formula the array operation sits. And it sits in the number argument of ABS. Over here, number argument of ABS. And you have to ask the question, does that argument and function understand array operations? No, this one doesn't. So we have to tell it that this is a special array calculation by using the special keystroke Control, Shift, and Enter. By using Control, Shift, and Enter, Excel understands that we did an array formula. Now, you can't stop there. Once you do Control, Shift, Enter, you actually have to look up to the formula bar, make sure those curly brackets are in your formula. Now, you can't type those in. Those are Excel. Excel put those in when you did Control, Shift, Enter. And those curly brackets mean Excel understood that you did Control, Shift, Enter. For example, if I put this back in edit mode and hit Enter, when I click on the cell and look up here, I can see there's no curly bracket. So we know we didn't enter it correctly. You also can get an error. So F2, and now I'm going to use Control, Shift, and Enter. There's the curly brackets. There's our answer. Now you can see whether we did it with a helper column and two cells or a single cell formula. And I'm going to hit Escape here. Every time I hit F9, boom, our formulas are retrieving the item from the item column for the item with the smallest difference between the two values. Now, if you're interested, you can come over to this answer sheet. You know, there's 450 Excel functions, and these are the seven arguments. Sum product, lookup, lookup, index, aggregate, and chi square test. Those are the only functions and the only arguments that can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. All other arguments and functions have to have that special keystroke. Hey, by the way, there's even a few functions that can never do array formulas. If you want to learn all about array formulas, there's the book I wrote, Control Shift Entering, Mastering Excel Array Formulas. You, of course, can get it at Amazon or MrExcel.com. All right, we'll see you next video.